You know, the moment that that trade was disallowed, you know, we just moved on. I don't, I mean, it comes up by Laker fans, you know, every day when I bump into somebody, but I've let it go. You can't, you can't hold on to something like that. You got to move forward quickly. Does anyone feel sorry for you? I mean, all your, I mean, you go to GM meetings, so they all go, hey, that sucks. Uh, I talked about it earlier. I mean, we're all competitive. Yeah. You know, nobody, I mean, I, I don't, I, I don't wish a team to lose all their games, but I wish our team to win every game. And when we look to make a deal, we don't worry about making another team better as long as we've made our team better. I mean, that, that's how we look at it. Um, but we're competitors. You know, that's, at least that's how I would characterize, you know, this league. Yeah, this is a very win now kind of trade, right? I mean, it's sort of, you're, you're adding an older guy. You're, you know, obviously he's, he signed up for three years, but is it just, you pretend to give up more draft picks. Is this, does that signal that that's the mode you guys are in for the... It, it was the cost of doing business. You know, to get a player like Steve Nash, that's what we had to do. And we would have preferred, you know, not to give up as much, um, but it wasn't an easy sell. I mean, if this had been a team on the East Coast, it might have been an easier sell. But, you know, a lot of the conversation and questions today had to do with, you know, why would Phoenix do something like this? They're in your division. So it was a tough sell. And I think at the end of the day, Phoenix got a lot of assets that can help them going forward. Did you have uh, uh, opportunities along the way to use that trade exception where you were tempted and now you're looking at it as like, wow, we dodged a bullet by, by that? Well, I don't know if we dodged a bullet. I, I think people expected when we made you know, the deal to move Lamar on that we got this trade exception. Okay, now you have to use it. And, and that may have meant you have to use it in two weeks or a month or two months. And, and um, although that was a, a prevailing you know, um, attitude out there that this is something they have to use, why aren't you using it? I think in ownership's credit, you know, being patient and waiting for the right opportunity, you know, I think it, it bodes well, you know, with ownership. They've always seemed to do the right thing at the right time. You feel like that, you there's no other way to say it. Is that one of the risks management had away as far as that opportunity might that not one, come right away? Was that a risk that, that you guys had away as a far risk? as... risk? Yeah, as far as that opportunity not being there right away to use the uh, critics. Of it. Yeah. No, I mean, you have pressure, you know, from whether it's the media or people you bump into at a 7-Eleven. You know, when are you going to improve the team? You got this exception. Why aren't you using it? Uh, so you continually have to just sit down and gather yourself and say, let's be patient and look for the right thing and don't waste it. You've given up a lot of picks in this move. Do you feel like it might hamstring you a little bit low going forward, either to making other moves? Or... Absolutely, absolutely. There's no doubt. Yeah. I mean, you know, with the new, I hate to keep on talking about the new collective bargaining agreement, but it's really restrictive now. Um, you know, the money that can exchange hands has been limited. Um, you know, the tax has gone up. Um, you know, the cap is going to slow in growth. So you're really limited to how you can improve a team. And draft picks are one of the few ways that you could improve a team. And we got to give them up. But we felt it was the right thing to do, you know, with this team as presently composed. composed. What did you think of the cap and the luxury, luxury tax thresholds that were announced yesterday? Were they what you expected? Yeah, they were, they, were, they, were, they were in the collective bargaining agreement, so we knew it would be those numbers. You credited ownership for always making the right decision. How much of that is also your recommendation, your responsibility in that? Uh, I work very closely with, you know, Jim, Buss, obviously, and uh, other people. You know, people that were down here that you might not know, Glenn Carraro and uh, our attorney, Jim Perzik, Bill Bertka, Ron Ray Jackson, Ryan West. You know, they're here. They do a lot of work with us. Uh, but primarily, I spend most of my time with, with Jim Buss. So you're not going to take any credit for the success. You're going to be humble about it and just, just pass um, it up the credit. I'm just telling the truth. Okay. Well, I know you work with those other people, but there have been moves made along. That, that uh, I am the front person. Okay. You know, I'm the guy that's got to get on the phone and make the deal. But you can't make a deal unless you have the parameters of a deal and the support to make the deal. So what made you feel good about Steve giving him a three-year deal at his age? You know, I got him on the phone, and um, I, I, we had already made our mind up, but I, I had said to him, um, are you going to make me look bad by giving you this third year? <laughs> right. <laughs> and it was a phone conversation, so I think for the first 30 seconds he thought I was serious. Right. So he went into like 30 to 45 seconds of explaining why I wasn't going to look bad. <laughs> you know, about why he stays in shape and yeah. what he does. And 
And halfway through, I just had to say, Steve, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you got the third year ready. <laughs> Mitch, I know you probably already discussed this, but can Lakers fans expect any more big moves coming your way? I'm probably sick of talking about it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so hard to make, you know, a big move or a splash in this business. Every general manager and every organization tries to do it. Now, we've been, you know, lucky over the years where we've made a couple, and we think we made another one today. So to, to actually think that there'll be another one, you know, coming shortly, I think that's unrealistic. Hey, when you said that when the, on draft day, when you said, I, you know, I think we, we're going to try to hit a home run, were you thinking of this deal? Is that what you had in your head? No. No, we always try to hit home runs. Yeah. That, that was my point. Every right. general manager at the end of the season, you look at where you are, and your goal is not to make a mediocre move. Your, your, your goal as a general manager is to hit a home run. There's no other way to look at it. Well, money ball is about you know, if you set your, It depends where you set your goals. If you set your goals low, you're going to... So we set them high. But we do feel pressure, maybe more so than some organizations, uh, to live up to our expectations. But Mitch, can, can you set the record straight with everything going on with Dwight Howard? Because there's so many different reports and different rumors that no one really ever knows what's going on. Including me. <laughs> I'd be one of them right now. Nobody but are you still in, the, in, in the play? Are you still playing for it? Uh, if we're talking about Dwight Howard, you know, NBA rules prohibit me from talking about other teams' players. Uh, but in general, um, we're still active in the market. You know, we have a lot of work to do with our bench and existing free agents. So there's still more work to be done.